Today we're going to learn about narrative writing techniques. We're going to focus in on one narrative writing technique today. Today, I am going to teach you how to use the narrative technique of description. By using the narrative technique of description, or any other writing, narrative writing technique, it helps us develop our characters and experiences and events in our writing. First, we're going to look at a Google slide of narrative writing techniques. So what is a narrative writing technique? A narrative, oops, sorry. A narrative writing technique is a method that an author of a narrative uses to convey what they want. A narrative technique is a strategy that is used to enhance the narrative. Some types of techniques make the narrative more artistic or full of emotion. And like I said today, we're going to focus on the narrative technique of description. So what is description? The narrative technique of using description in writing helps to decide how to describe a place, person, or object. The details help you communicate with your reader. The details also help you enhance your writing. When we think about description, there are some we can relate it to the five senses. We can think about how our eyes help us see things when we want to describe something. We can think about how our hearing or ears help us want to hear something we may be describing. Our nose can help us describe maybe a scent that you may be familiar with and what you're writing with in your narrative or maybe something in your narrative reminds you of a certain scent. We can also use our mouth. What do you taste? Does it taste sour? Does it taste bitter? Does it taste sweet? It's another way just to enhance your writing. And lastly, we can use our sense of touch. What does it feel like? Was it hard? Was it soft? What are ways that you can describe things and items in your narrative that will help bring your narrative more to life and be more engaging for your reader? So here's a description of a narrative exam of a, the narrative technique of description. So a simple sentence would be, tonight I went for a walk. It's a good, it's a pretty short sentence. When you read that, is it really engaging to you? What do you think when you hear that sentence? Think about it for a minute. Tonight, I went for a walk. If you read that, you might just be like, okay, the person went for a walk. But if we look over here at the, the using description side, we might say, tonight, when it was dark and the moon was shining, I went for a walk in the cool, crisp air. Do you see the difference between those two sentences? not using description the sentence is very short it's very right to the point but when you add in those simple words dark the moon was shining in the cool crisp air it kind of catches the reader's attention and it kind of reminds me maybe of a time when i went for a walk in the fall here's another example that we can look up so let's use this picture to be a little bit more descriptive so non-descriptive, I could just say a man, there's a man sitting on a bench in the park. But there's more in that picture. There's more than just a man sitting on the park bench, right? Look at the picture for a minute and think about what you might think. When I looked at the picture again, after I thought about it for a minute, I said there is a younger man who's sitting on a park bench. He looks like he may have just finished jogging. It looks to be a brisk autumn morning. I just use kind of my five senses to look around that picture and just be able to describe it a little bit better. It already makes the sentence much stronger. Your turn. I want you to take about two minutes to write down in your rotor's notebook or a piece of paper to make a more reflective sentence for this picture. So go ahead, pause the video here and take two minutes. Welcome back. Hopefully your sentence about this picture was a bit more descriptive after you had time to think about it and really look at that picture. Now we're going to go to another example. We're going to read an expert from the essay called Return to July. I'm going to click on this link here. All right. All 
All right, so we're going to read paragraph five of Return to July. So let's read this. That hot night, Lou's China Garden was empty. While Mr. Lou set off to get mom's soup order together, I waited at the counter with the few sweaty, crumbled ones I've gotten from dad's chip jar. I watched the fortune cat with the big eyes on the shelf next to the register, waving at what seemed like a perfect time to faint the sounds of Chinese opera coming from an old radio in Mr. Lou's dark kitchen. I couldn't stop looking at it, though I don't know why I should care about a thing like that. He looked like some kind of cheap toy that, may, that my sisters might have enjoyed when they were younger. Before I could think about what I was doing, I picked up the cat, flicked the small power button under his paws to off, and put the motionless creature back in my backpack. I placed the money on the counter and walked out. That was the last time I set foot in Lou's China Garden, my family's favorite nearby restaurant. So wow, there's lots of details in there. And we even go back to here and it says, I waited at the counter with a few sweaty crumbled ones I've gotten from Dad's chip jar. I mean, if you think about that, like I can even picture a sweaty old dollar bill. You know, it really brings it to life. So let's go back to the slideshow and let's look at the questions that I have proposed for you. So what caught your attention or engaged you in this paragraph? You can use your writer's notebook to write down what you're thinking, or you can just think these out loud like I am. So one of the things that caught my attention or engaged me in this paragraph was right away that just the details, the description, a few sweaty crumbled ones. He could have easily wrote a dollar bill. I waited at the counter with a dollar bill. But that's not engaging. That's not really setting up your story. It's not really building up your character. It's not really describing anything. But just adding in those few sweaty crumbled ones makes it more engaging. Question number two. What information does this paragraph tell us about the characters in the narrative? How did the narrative provide this information? What are you thinking? What information does the paragraph tell us about the characters in the narrative? What are you thinking? Write that down in your reader's notebook. When I'm thinking about the characters, it sounds like it might have been hot in that kitchen. And maybe they were working really hard in that kitchen. Let's go back to question number three. What examples of descriptions did the writer include in the paragraph? What did the descriptions reveal to us about the experience or events in the narratives? So we kind of already talked about this when we answered the first question. But <clears throat> if we go back to a return to July, what are some descriptions we see? Well, we see fat, sweaty, crumbled woods. I watched the fortune cat with the big eyes on the shelf next to the watch register waving in what seemed like perfect time to faint the sound of the Chinese opera coming from an old radio. I couldn't stop looking, though I don't know why I should care about things like that. Here we go. He looked like some kind of cheap toy that my sister may have enjoyed when they were younger. So there's another thing. Like you can picture a cheap toy that you had from when you were a kid. You know, you can really imagine it, really description it, really gets your readers um, engaged into it. So it's really important that when that we use descriptive writing in our narratives, it helps us make the right choices about how to describe um, how to describe a person, place, or thing, and it really enhances the details in our writing piece. When we describe something, it is different than from just telling. Kind of like that picture that we had. We can just see the man sitting on the bench. That's just telling us something. But when we go back in and we add those details, we're really describing it. So it's important to know that describing is different than telling. The details you choose to write about should be the most important elements you want your reader to read. You can add in details about your characters, the setting, the character's feelings, what the characters say and do, and what the characters are thinking. Now that we've had some time to explore the technique of description, Let's look how it helps communicate to the reader and points of view. All of these things help our reader to be able to picture what we are writing about. When you are writing a description, you should pretend that you are looking through a camera. We use both description and details to engage our reader and orient our reader. Next, I want to introduce you to something called pitchforking. You might think of a pitchfork and think that it's formulated, but this is actually a great video I'm going to show you to actually learn about what pitchforking is. So pitchforking is a strategy to use to add more detail to your writing. So go ahead and click on this link 
it's going to bring you to this video and you are going to watch this video once you are done watching this video i want you to come back to the slideshow Welcome back. Now that you've had time to learn a little about what pitchforking is, let's look at this. Um, let's look at this sentence that I wrote here. I swam in the ocean. So I'm going to take the word swam, and that's going to be my noun. I'm going to put that on the handle of the pitchfork. Now I'm going to think of three words that I can add to swim or that remind me of swimming that help enhance my sentence. So when I did that, I thought about kicking, refreshing, and turquoise. So my new sentence was, I swam in the ocean, kicking my feet in the refreshing turquoise water. You see how we just picked a, a noun or a verb from our sentence, and then we added in three more adjectives or verbs or descriptions to describe it, and it really helps to enhance our sentence. So now it's your turn. I want you to look at one paragraph in your writing and determine one sentence that could really use more detail. Find a word that you can expand on and try the pitchfork method of adding more detail. When you are done that, please return to this video. Welcome back. There are many other narrative techniques that can be used that you can use to improve your writing. Check out this video to see what other narrative techniques there are. Once you are done watching this video, I want you to go back through your narrative writing and pick two or three more paragraphs to add more detail to more add detail add more detail to using some of the, the strategies that I taught you in this lesson. Remember, it's important to use your five senses when you're describing um, details in your story. Remember, details make us or our narratives stand out much better from, from our writing.